Well, uh, my name is Angel Guerrero. I'm a PhD student of the Atmospheric Physics Group at the University of Leon. And I'm going to introduce the A, the, the GFA Open Lab, which basically it's a, an open repository uh, of meteorology, meteorological data. Uh, first of all, I want to to, to talk about meteorolo uh, meteorological data itself. Uh, it has two sources mainly. Uh, it comes from uh, for its forecasting models or uh, observation systems. I mean, with forecasting models, we have information information about the <coughs> atmosphere in the future. Uh, in the other hand, we need observation, uh, observation systems to validate what our model, uh, our, our forecasting model says. I mean, uh, forecasting, model, uh, forecasting models are not uh, perfect tools. They have to be, they have a lot of parameters that have to be set uh, according to a specific geographical area and, and you need to set it by comparing the results you obtain with uh, the results you obtain with observation systems. Uh, you compare them and you see that your forecast uh, looks like uh, your observa uh, observation system says, maybe you are doing it uh, well. I mean, uh, and then I want to talk about uh, two problems that usually uh, meteorological researchers have to have to deal with. Uh, it's difficult to have to get uh, that, uh, that 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 you need to validate or to contrast your policy. It's very difficult. You need to uh, ask for data to a lot of uh, manage uh, to a lot of policies that are in. I'll tell you it later, a little more. And there is another problem which has to do with the format of the information. I mean, uh, there is a lot of, uh, of formats uh, in, in, in the information. For example, uh, forecasting models gives the, the results in a format called NetCDF, uh, a weather stations. A uh, weather station, for example, makes uh, produce uh, the outputs in a text uh, in a text plane format. So, if you have to work with several sources, you need to mix that information, and that's usually it's not a, a, an easy task, uh, especially if uh, you don't have an IT engineer in the group. I, uh, I am I'm an IT engineer, but I work with a lot of physicians in the atmospheric physics groups. Uh, so the objective of the GFA Open Data is just to develop a repository uh, with uh, meteorological data from as much sources as possible and make it available to everyone without any restriction. <laughs> There is here. There was a, 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 a slide uh, which talked uh, about the um, the different sources that have out and data manage at present. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> we can see it, but I'm going to talk it. Uh, just a little bit. Uh, is there, uh, at present, there are three uh, sources of information in GPA from that. The first one uh, has to do with uh, official uh, managed risk bodies like uh, Comisión Hidrológica del Duero, Comisión Hidrológica del Ebro, and Junta de Castilla y León. They have a lot of information, a lot of weather stations. Uh, and they have, uh, and they offer their results to us. 
uh, we have to we have signed an agreement uh, in order to do that. But uh, the, the the group uh, has uh, the the ambition of of include a lot of a lot of people in the in the open data. There are a lot of uh, of uh, people who likes meteorology and who has his uh, own uh, weather station at home. There are uh, a lot of a lot of them. And in the group, uh, we thought, we think that that is a, a, a source of information very important because there are a lot of information there. So we have made a volunteers network in which they send us. Uh, their data and we need to use it in the open data so uh, all the scientific community can access to, to it. There, uh, uh, we are uh, working just in Castilla y León. And the, the third, uh, the third uh, source of information we, we have is uh, the, uh, the information uh, the uh, the GFA, the group produced because they have uh, some some uh, observation observations systems such as uh, Meteosat uh, receptor, for example, uh, a hail sensor network, uh, and things like that. Uh, the first problem we have to we have to deal with is to uh, convert that uh, heterogeneity uh, information in something uh, that we could store in a relational database. Uh, in order to do so, we have uh, to look for the points in common that meteorological data has and is, and uh, that's what this diagram represents. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, a given measure, uh, uh, the value of a given measure of a given variable such as temperature, uh, temperature uh, wind speed, uh, uh, rain convection, and the value of, uh, of a measure of a given of a given variable is the relationship between uh, a place. Uh, a place is just a representation of a geographical point. I mean, uh, it's identified by its coordinates: uh, latitude, uh, latitude, longitude, and, and height over the sea. Okay, so if we have uh, uh, a given value for a given variable uh, in a given point at a given time. We have information uh, of what is happening in a given point at a given time, and if I have that information for a lot of points, I can uh, I can construct uh, a three-dimensional grid with all this information. The the open data uh, the open data has a uh, five-layer architecture. Uh, the first one uh, has to do with the input data, the different kinds of information we can introduce in the, in the, in the open data, such as weather stations, uh, satellite uh, image uh, information, volunteers observations, uh, meteorological radar information, models, etc. All this information can uh, can be stored in the in the open data using uh, uh, some web services that are in the second layer. There are several uh, web services that let uh, let us introduce all the information, transform it like I told you before in something I, uh, we can store in a relational database. On the other hand, uh, we need to extract the information of, of, of that repository 
Uh, in order to do so, we have uh, another layer of uh, web services which allows to extract information of the, of the database in several formats. Uh, here there are some graphical representations, but not just uh, graphical representations alone. We can extract information in a format or in text play file format, which allows uh, to use it in, uh, for developing third-party apps, for example. And uh, this information uh, has been used by the, by the group in order to, to, to develop uh, their own research projects. For example, uh, the, the group has developed an application which uh, allows to predict with a, a couple of hours uh, how, uh, when it's going to have a high storm. That's very important, uh, for example, for, for, uh, for agriculture. Uh, there, is, there, is, uh, there is another application which allows to uh, produce uh, a, a precipitation evaluation this is uh, the probability offering a certain place, uh, which can be uh, which can be compared with the information in the open data. This is the the the, the precipitation estimate, and this is the the information in the open data, uh, which can be uh, given from weather station, for example, and this is the in the middle. We have the comparison uh, for evaluating the evaluating the, the algorithm, uh, the red uh, the red zones uh, identify the hints of the algorithm, the the <coughs> the green are those cases and the blue are false alarms. But uh, the, the, the group has discovered that, that this information is not just important for, for, for research project, uh, for, for, for research uh, projects. Uh, they have uh, used it at, uh, at, their, at the subjects they deliver in the, in the university. For example, there is uh, a, a subject called uh, Meteorology and Climatology where uh, students have to, uh, to choose between uh, several forecasting models and they have to say what, uh, what model is better. The, the way to do this is by comparing the model outputs with the uh, data you have of the observation system. So we have uh, give access to the to the students to compare the <coughs> the results of the model in blue. This is temperature and the results of the observation of the observation systems in red, for example. Uh, in another subject such as uh, atmospheric uh, observation and surveillance, they have to to learn to deal with uh, risk management and to monitor uh, material, meteorological uh, risks in real time. And the group has realized that the the applications they have developed uh, are useful in order to to do a real time monitoration. For example, uh, the the application. The application for evaluate uh, precipitation uh, uh, to get a precipitation estimate is useful to detect uh, uh, several storms in real time. It's especially useful if you if you can uh, compare it with observation systems. And just for finish, uh, the conclusions we have we have reached after. 
after all the work is that uh, the, all, the fulfillment data is not just useful for research in order to develop uh, applications, uh, it's, it's also useful uh, for students in order to get all the, uh, the competence they need to, to, to get, uh, they will need to use in their future work. And that's all. If uh, you have any any question, I'll try to to answer it. Uh, 